Today I just want to talk a little bit about what's called ring mod side chaining. And uh, I learned about this from a recent video, um, which I'll link uh, in the description. And the user is Baraska, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, but it was a very interesting video that talked about uh, different ways of side chaining it. And towards the end, he mentions this thing called ring mod side chaining. And uh, I had spent quite a bit of time just trying to understand how this whole ring mod side chaining thing worked. And uh, if you want to kind of know how to set things up in Ableton and, and uh, kind of a quick explanation, go see his video. This video is mainly um, to try to really break down wh what this ring mod sidechain is doing, mainly to help me help myself understand it because I didn't know uh, too much about ring modulation and, and how this actually worked. Um, so I'm going to show this in in Reaper and I'll also kind of explain how to how to set this up in Reaper um, as well as Bitwig. Um, so. The, the general idea here is um, when you have something like a bass line and, and some drums, like a, a kick, um, you kind of want to avoid them clashing each other. So a common solution is, is, is simply side chaining where the, the bass gets ducked whenever the kick comes in. And you know, pretty much every electronic music song does this. Um, and what this video talked about is a different way of side chaining, which is essentially the same thing. You're ducking out the bass, but it's doing it at a much more precise level and basically tracking the waveform of the drum or the kick. And the way I'm going to explain this is to kind of give you an example of, okay, a bass, a kick, and what the result is if we sum them and what the result would be when we do this ring mod side chain. Um, so here's a, a typical project where the, this first track is a bass and I'm just gonna play it real quick. Um, so all this is is a, a, a sine wave, it's around 70 hertz. And the key thing is that the peak is the peak is zero dB, so we're at the maximum kind of level for this baseline. Um, on the second track, I have a, a kick, and when I play this, um, we'll see that the the frequency is also around seventy, and the peak is zero as well. So they're both kind of maximum volume. Now, if we were to just sum these together, um, obviously we're going to get something that's that's higher than zero dB. It's basically going to be double the volume. Um, and this is what I have in this third track is simply the sum of the, the bass and the kick. And when I play that, you can kind of see that the, the peak is six decibels, which is double the volume. And uh, if we were to kind of run this into a limiter or a clipper, you know, that's all, we'll just basically cut it, cut it at zero. Um, so the idea is like, how can we do this combination of kick and bass without actually going over zero? And this fourth track is the result of a, of a ring mod side chaining. And when I play this, it is the sum of the, both the, the kick and the bass. However, we're not going over zero dB. It's exactly zero dB. And if you look at this waveform, um, you can maybe guess what it's doing. It, it's uh, basically taking the bass and kind of carving out the waveform of the kick. So the kick kind of comes all the way through um, until the kick 
ends and then you kind of get the baseline again and and obviously when you play this you don't really hear any ducking or anything like that so i found in practice like this is pretty good to get the peaks down but i i would kind of combine it with a normal volume uh, ducking which kind of adds that more dramatic effect that in many cases, you want to, to hear that. In some cases, you don't, depending on the type of music you're making. Um, so that's kind of the end result. And I think it's, it's uh, to me, it was quite eye-opening um, to be able to do this. Uh, there is some distortion you can kind of see, but um, it isn't too bad if you do things correctly and, and not overdo it. And, and also maybe combine it with regular um, slide tuning. The main benefit is, you know, when you're trying to not go over zero dB, you're trying to maybe not have the limiter work so hard um, at the end. I think it, I, I would probably be start using this in my future tracks. I think it's a cool thing. I only learned about it after watching this video. So uh, I just want to thank uh, that person who made the video. It was pretty enlightening. What I'm going to kind of talk about now is what this ring modulation is doing and how kind of each step in the process works. And, I, and I'll do this by showing the waveforms of each step. Um, just also a quick note is in this track, which is the sum, um, and the Reaper is basically capping this out at zero, but if I lowered the volume, we can kind of see that, you know, those hills are still there. It's just not being displayed. And so the next thing I want to show is kind of each step of this process of ring mod side chaining. And I have, a similar setup, but in this case, uh, I'm not showing the, the stereo wave signals. Uh, I'm just showing the left channel, which just makes it a bit easier to kind of understand what it's doing. Um, and we can kind of study this process. So again, the first track I have what what is, you know, can be a bass line. In the second track, I have uh, kind of a kick that is coming in. And the first kind of step in this process is, is what's called uh, rectifying the kick. And this is essentially, um, we take this kick and we're making everything that's positive, everything that's above this middle line, and we're flipping it to negative. So we can see this third track is basically the kick, but everything is uh, below zero, so it's negative. Um, and this is tracking the kick, so we haven't done anything with the bass yet. Um, and this rectifying can be done with uh, a plugin called M Wave Shaper from Melda. Um, in the the video linked, uh, he kind of describes how to set that up. Uh, I'll show it as well. Um, the the kind of next step that needs to be done is we need to take the base and ring modulate it with the rectified kick. And so the qu first question is like, what is ring modulation? And ring modulation is simply multiplication, okay? And uh, I'm gonna sh kind of try to explain this step by step. Uh, so as an example, what we're going to do is we have this rectified kick on this third track, and we have the the uh, the bass on the on the first track. So we're basically multiplying the bass times the rectified kick, and that is ring modulation. So as an example, if I I move the playhead uh, at this point in in the bass, we have some positive value in the rectified kick. We have the a negative value kind of close to, to negative one and the, the base is close to positive one. If we multiply them out, that results in a negative value. So it's kind of this negative close to one um, 
value. We, if we kind of follow this more along, let's say we go to this, uh, this, this zero point in the, in the ring modded base. So why do we get zero? Well, uh, in the sign we have a positive and in the rectified kick we have zero. You just take a positive times zero, we end up with zero on the ring modulation. If you keep kind of following this along, at some point we get to positive in the ring mod. And the reason why we have positive there is we have a negative in the uh, in the base and we multiply that with a negative in the rectified kick that results in a positive. And you, you can kind of just follow this along. That's exactly what it's doing. It's just multiplying and we get this kind of resulting waveform of this uh, base ring modulated with the rectified kick. Okay. Kind of the next step that you need to do is we then take this, this ring modulated waveform and we need to sum it back with the base. And you kind of guess what it's doing. It's basically carving out some, uh, it's carving out a waveform from the from the sign from the base. So so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna take this fourth track, which is ring mod base, and sum it with the the base track. So as an example, let's say I go to uh, around here. We see on the base it's about about one. On the ring mod base it's about negative one. That sums to zero. Right? Um, if we go a little further out, maybe here, um, here we have kind of a positive value in the base and we add it with the ring mod base, which is at zero. So we're just gonna stay with that positive value. Um, and at some point we're gonna go down to negative over here. Here we have uh, a negative value and then we add that with a small positive value, we still end up with negative. And this is simply summing, and I'm just kind of trying to explain the, the process, and we get this kind of summed waveform at the bottom. And if I kind of zoom out, you will see that uh, this resulting waveform is, you can think of it as the base waveform with the, the kick kind of carved out of it. So there's, there's space made for the, the kick to come through. And that's essentially how the during modulation works. Mm -hmm. Something to also note is, you know, we are carving out this, uh, this sort of drum uh, waveform out of the base. Uh, we still need to send the drum output to the master out. So you would kind of mix this result with the regular kick or the, the drums. In other words, um, the, the drums need to go out on a separate track. All we're doing here is just carving out the space for the drum. I'm going to now talk about how to set this up in Reaper. Yeah, so you can kind of do this uh, multiple ways. Uh, you can either do it with one track in Reaper if you understand how to uh, how to handle like multi-channel tracks, or you can do it with multiple tracks. I'm going to show quickly kind of both ways and a, a link to um, some track templates of, of of this if you want to study it more. So here here's an example of just kind of one uh, track which sets up um, the rectifying and the, the ring modulation. And the way this works is um, we use um, M-Wave Shaper to the rectifying. That's, again, explained in Baraska's video. And we do M-Ring Modulator. Um, but the way we need to set this up is uh, the ring modulator needs to um, have the rectified drums as its sidechain. The way to kind of set this up is uh, 
with these channel parameters. Um, so here I'm looking at the, the wave shaper, and this is essentially saying that um, channels five and six are going to inputs one and two of the plugin, and the outputs, uh, uh, outputs left and right are, are going back out on this on these channels five and six. And normally we would just use one and two for the input. That's where we would send kind of like the base or whatever we want to duck into channels one and two. So now we have um, this the rectified drums on five and six. So we would send the drums to channel five and six of this track, and it would output on channel five and six the rectified drums. Next thing we do is the ring modulation. And if I look at the, the plugin pins, here we say, okay, channel one and two are simply one, one and two of, of the, the plugin. We're based, that's where we would send the base or whatever we want to duck um, into channel one and two. And we see that the, the side chain channels are coming from five and six. And five and six are the rectified uh, drums from the M wave shaper. And then we take the kind of output of this whole M ring modulator and send it to another pair of channels, which is three and four. Because the idea is we need to take um, the result of this and combine it back with the, the, the base or whatever you want to duck. So that the output gets, gets to three and four. Um, finally, these just need to be summed. So we take one and two, the channels one and two, which are um, the base, for example, and then three and four, which um, is the kind of the ring modulated rectified drums that's going out to three and four, and we combine them together and that results in, in uh, the side chaining that we want. So it's a bit complicated with the, the whole channel setup and in Reaper, but this is how you would do it in one one track. In Baraska's video, he talks about he shows how to do it in Ableton, which is a, a bit easier. Um, you can also do this with uh, multiple tracks if you don't want to um, use these different channels in on one track. That it. It's a bit easier to kind of understand um, if, if, if we're doing multiple tracks. So for example, that we have one track that should receive the kick or whatever drums that you want to send, um, and that has the M-Wave shaper, and, and it just simply routes that properly to another track, which is the ring modulator, which you, which would have the 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 base or whatever you want to duck. I will include the track templates in the description in case uh, anyone wants to understand them a bit more. And uh, finally, this is uh, a way to set this up in Bitwig. Um, I didn't create this. This was uh, created by a friend of mine, Michael. Um, but it, it essentially is the same thing uh, is using the Melda plugins, but it's using the FX grid in Bitwig. Um, you can kind of see that there is a rectifying happening um, and this audio sidechain would be uh, taking input from the drums. Um, we apply ring modulation. We need to sum it with the negative and then mix them together. Yeah, mix them together. Um, there's a there's a follower here to kind of try to deal with any distortion or kind of smooth in the uh, the ring modulation that's happening. I will link this in the description in case you want to download it.